Hello, welcome to episode 5 of our podcast here at Education Design Lab. Here at the lab, we're a diverse team with an expertise in higher education who believes that designing models from the learner perspective can help address equity and skills gaps in the world of work, and that education is the most important lever for economic mobility. My name is Ayana Conway. And I am the social media and community specialist here at Education Design Lab. Today, I am so, so excited to announce that we have not one, but two very special guests here today, and they are Naomi and Steve. So without further ado, please help me welcome Naomi and Steve. Hello, my name is Naomi Boyer, and I serve as a Senior Vice President of Digital Transformation at Education Design Lab. I've been with the lab now for four and a half years, and my work with the lab targets the use of technology to support human, the human, this is the important part, the human in the design process as well as the scaling of many prototypes that have been co-designed with our partners. I have a background in technology, higher education administration, community engagement, and my personal research passion is on the topic of self-directed learning. I draw upon all of these experiences to work with my fellow labbies and our external partners in furthering the digital credential and skills ecosystem. And now I'm going to turn it over to one of my our external partners, Steve Cochran. Hi, thanks, Naomi. Well, first off, let me just say how excited uh, I am to be here today. I was just telling everybody this is my first podcast, so uh, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Steve Cochran. I'm the Senior Director for Workforce Education for Polk County Public Schools. Uh, I've been in the field of education for over 32 years now. Uh, started off as a special education teacher, and then somewhere about mid-career, I, I fell in love with career and technical education because I found that um, of my joy coming from connecting kids to their uh, future and that and finding their potential and putting them in the right direction. So uh, I have uh, a background in history, special education, uh, educational leadership. And um, uh, I'm just glad to be here today uh, working with uh, Ed Design Labs. And uh, today, I think we're going to talk about the Propel Polk project. We are definitely here to talk about yeah. Propel Polk. So if you could kind of give a little bit of background, what is Propel Polk? Propel Polk was a Catalyze grant. So Catalyze is a coalition of funders that came together and um there's a, a project called Catalyze uh, Challenge. And we, the lab, in conjunction with Polk County Schools, was awarded a Catalyze grant. As part of that, it's all about how can we think about testing the lab's durable skills, 21st century skills, digital micro-credentials with 11th and 12th graders. And so I happen to live in Polk County, Florida, which is how I know Steve. It's a county-wide school district. And um, they were a willing partner uh, coming along with us on the journey of, of this exploration and to test the credentials. Steve, did you want to add something else? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just wanted a little history. It, you know, Naomi and I had worked together uh, in the past on uh, a few uh, projects. She was a member of one of my advisory boards. So uh, she knew that um, I had been looking at, at micro-credentials for our district. I, I wasn't sure how we were uh, going to go about bringing them in. Uh, you know, honestly, and I, as I've told Naomi before, I, everything I know about micro-credentials, I've learned from uh, Naomi. But I knew that, that they had potential to be a real game changer for some of our students. Um, and so when she brought this project to me, uh, we were very uh, eager in uh, in accepting it and implementing it here in Polk County. You know, Ayana, one thing I should also add is we also have other community organizations that have been queued up. And the, the Polk County itself offered a fantastic ecosystem to think about the talent pipeline, right? So we had Polk Vision, which is our countywide visioning organization for the entire county. They convene and they take action against, against major issues for the county. Um, Central Florida Development Council uh, has partnered working on a talent pipeline team to think about how we can enhance the talent 
in this region. Um, and we have other community groups and stakeholder groups and chambers that have all been focused on how do we think about creating a really robust opportunity for college and career readiness for those that are coming out of high school but also queuing up into post-secondary and into the workforce. Let me bring in one more point. One of the projects that Naomi and I worked on was doing a listening session throughout our, our county. Uh, and uh, it's it's a very big county. It is uh, <laughs> might be the largest size-wise in the state of Florida. We are, well, population-wise, for students, we're also the sixth largest uh, in the state. So we're, we're, we're pretty big county land wise and student wise. But, um, one of the things that we did together was go out. Uh, we took a group of community stakeholders. We went out, we listened to our business partners and we wanted to kind of take a pulse on were we providing, uh, the kind of students and future employees that they needed here in Polk County. And while we got some positive feedback, we also got some uh, feedback that there were some holes in, in our educational process. There were some things that were lacking. We were doing a great job with preparing them with skills. We churning out industry certifications. Um, we were preparing students to do the technical things. But where we were kind of falling down was in the uh, 21st century skills, the skills that students need uh, to interact in the workplace to be successful. So all of this, kind of a perfect storm uh, for a, a good kind of storm that we don't normally get here in Florida. But it, <laughs> it was a perfect, uh, a, you know, situation for us to, we, we had the, uh, the need, we had the local expert here, and, uh, you know, we had the willing, which was me. Uh, so, uh, you know, the Propel Pole Project was timely and a, and a perfect project for Polk County. And it seems like you have the resources to actually implement it and make a difference. And I know, Steve, you mentioned 21st century skills and also micro-credentialing, but I don't think a lot of people actually know what that is. So, Naomi or Steve, can well, you... Well, well, Naomi would be impressed <laughs> with my knowledge now. I am still... I'm not going to speak about it when I have the expert right here. So, Naomi, you, you, you take this one. Well, thank you, Steve. I don't know about expertise, but I've lived in this for the four, last four and a half years. So I know a little bit about, at least a little bit about <laughs> so, digital micro-credentialing, specifically the 21st century skills. The lab has a catalog of nine 21st century skills, digital micro-credentials. These are the things like oral communication, collaboration, critical thinking, initiative, resilience, empathy, and underneath each one of those micro-credentials are four sub-competencies that are demonstrable, meaning they can be demonstrated to competency, which is really important, which is what makes them a digital micro-credential versus just a digital badge. So when we're talking about digital micro-credentials, it's both the learning and validation opportunity, and then the credential itself has digital data behind it that expresses what was learned how it was learned, who issued the credential, when the ish credential was issued. So all of this information is what makes it digital and makes it able to communicate something across somebody earning it and then sharing it with others. On the other hand, when you hear about badging and badges, oftentimes those are used synonymously, but badges are, can be awarded for something like participation, right? I went to this conference, I got a badge, or I, I, participated in a um, an, an activity or I was a part of an experience, but no one's checking to make sure I have the knowledge and skills. So badges is a digital representation of that digital micro-credential, but badges can be awarded for multiple things and not necessarily always competency. So these, what we have in our framework is digital micro-credentials with a competency framework underneath it and everyone who earns one of those digital micro-credentials, which Steve's going to talk a little bit about the folks in Polk County that earn that, but everyone who earns one has demonstrated the same criteria. They can show that they're competent in that skill. So think about that. Empathy. How the heck do you measure empathy, right? It's hard to measure. I don't know that I could measure empathy as a <laughs> I give a badge of empathy, 
But you have to unpack that to the four sub competencies that represent empathy. For instance, listen actively is one of those sub competencies. We can watch as someone listens actively, right? You nod, you, there's different body movements, there's different things you do when you listen actively that can be seen. And that's why a digital micro credential can be awarded because we have assessments that look at each one of those sub competencies and, and verifies the competence of that individual to then be able to demonstrate that, which then makes them much more viable for those jobs Steve was talking about where those employers said they, they couldn't find folks with those skills. So you guys are basically solving the problem from your listening tour with Polk or Propel Polk. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, on that listening tour that we had previously done, it was really disheartening to hear manufacturers that had been on a seven day a week, 24 hour schedule of production to say they had they had um, slimmed down their schedule to I think it was four 12 hour days only producing in their on their manufacturing floors the things that did not require quality control because they couldn't get the talent in the workforce to sustain the production that they had originally intended. That is a huge issue when it comes to economic development. And so the great work that Steve's doing with the Academy is to really think about making those 21st century skills um, evident, but really important for that individual student that, they, that it is intentional, explicit, and that when they walk into an interview, they can tell someone how they can demonstrate critical thinking. You know, I, I... I'm glad that I let uh, Naomi speak to uh, micro credentials, and, and you know, I, I did want to say that I I had an idea of where micro credentials would fit uh, here in Polk County, but um, as we went through the process and and kind of extended out another year, I think micro credentials are going to be part of an option that we offer students um, for those who are interested in going right into the workforce and. Uh, what what we will have is uh, a student will earn an industry certification and then earn a set of micro-credentials that are um, appreciated by uh, a specific employer. Not the same set, but that may be a different set of micro-credentials for each employer. And uh, those, uh, I, I see that combination as potentially being more valuable to uh, employers than a college diploma, um, because we we've, we've made we've tailored um, our the we tailored the skills that the employer is looking for uh, directly to their business, and we should be able to uh, spend less time so that these individuals will also be able to go into the workforce faster than um, than students who went on a four year college grad track. Now, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not saying that, that uh, college will be replaced, but what I see, this is, is another tool in our tool chest um, to help uh, build a, a and sustain uh, a, a, uh, a workforce here in Polk County that is going to be successful. It's a yes and, right, Steve? So right. It's, it, right. Than, it's not these credentials, short-term, non-degree credentials, industry certifications, or a degree, they should all kind of be stackable and provide entry points and on-ramps into post-secondary learning, yeah. because we do know that those with, with post-secondary credentials do end up with a higher earning potential over a lifetime. That's correct. That yeah. is correct. So uh, we want to talk about what what we learned through uh, Propel Polk and, and what our, our outcomes uh, were. So uh, the first year that we um, that we did Propel Polk, the goals were to to uh, to affect 450 juniors and seniors, to engage uh, employers and identify their highest priority need, engage uh, Polk County uh, employers also in a campaign to educate them about micro credentials because. Um, you know, sometimes when you get in the echo chamber of academia, you make assumptions that, oh, well, now everyone knows what micro-credentials are. No, the, we still need to educate the, the general public and especially our business partners on the value of micro-credentials. And 
uh, we want to expand uh, the use of the credentials for students um, to uh, to be employed and uh, to be successful in post-secondary education. So uh, the first year, we uh, I, I thought it would be a great idea to put micro credentials in our AVID programs, and um, AVID is a, a program designed for uh, potentially first-generation college students. Um, it is um, advancing. AVID stands for Advancing uh, Via Individual Determination. Um, and I thought that micro-credentials would be a great spot for that. Now, uh, I think, and, and we had very limited success in the, in the AVID program. And there were, there were two reasons for that. Well, one, they did have their own AVID curriculum. And uh, we didn't feel that the teachers, it was not the teacher's top priority to put out uh, and work with these students on industry certification. Some of them, not all of them, uh, uh, did not fully participate. Now, uh, ironically, I do want to say before I move on to where we had much more success, uh, the very next year, uh, the AVID people, uh, the AVID corporation that designs the AVID curriculum did find value in micro-credentials and have actually created some and put them into their curriculum. So. Um, I, I don't want to say whether we can take credit for introducing them in the AVID for first time, but uh, we were their, their first attempt. Where we had much more success was integrating it into our career and technical education programs. And, um, you know, that is where our, uh, our actual instructors saw these skills were valuable. They knew uh, the people that come and, and work for me in, in career and technical education normally come uh, with a background of actually working in the business. Um, all of our welders have been welders before. The people that teach our health science classes have been uh, nurses and RNs and other uh, and have worked in other places in uh, in healthcare. So everyone that comes to me and is an instructor for me has a background in their industry, and they knew that when they saw micro-credentials, that these have value. These are things that we use uh, in our regular business, uh, and these are things that the, that the students need to be successful when they go out at, into the workplace. So uh, we had much better um, results in, uh, in our career and technical education classrooms. The feedback that we got from the teachers um, uh, they considered the results to be successful with the students who received their micro-credentials. Steve, I was going to add one thing. Yes. So that first year that we implemented was 2021. Yes. 20, is 20, I think it was 21 to 22 school year. Yeah, that we were still pretty covid -y at that yeah. time. Yeah. And so when we first rolled out and started going, yeah. we had significant significant um, attendance issues where the students, there was not a stream of consistent students in any one class because they were coming in and out. We had a surge here in Polk County in January of that year, and it was, it was really difficult as well. So there were multiple factors that first year, but that's part of the insights of what we learned and allowed us to refocus our attention when we did that following year, the 2022 to 23 school year that we've implemented that where you were talking about the successes that you, you found. That was uh, a very difficult year for Polk County schools. I think for the entire nation, maybe the entire yeah. world, yeah. right? <laughs> Good question. Were the students learning or were they placing classes online? And then once COVID kind of settled down, were they attending more in person? Is that kind of where you saw success or was there a difference as far as like online and in-person learning? The first part of that year was all virtual and then students were um, were uh, completely back in the second half of the year. I think the virtual option was was removed. I should say there was a there was a hybrid being offered uh, for a while. They okay. could some could stay at home and do virtual. Some could come to school. But I think in the second half of the year, it became mandatory. But, um, you know, that still there were a lot of students that and teachers that were out of school, either um, 
either they had COVID or they were quarantining from COVID. So <laughs> it was it was quite disruptive. And and let me let me add that while the the digital micro credentials that the lab has, the modules are online. The school district was implementing those with classes that were face to face. So they were being facilitated by the teacher in those academy classrooms this past year, with even though the content was available online. Naomi kind of uh, touched on a little bit. Um, we are uh, adopters of the uh, academy system uh, here in Polk County. And uh, the model that we follow is uh, uh, by the National Career Academy Coalition. They have 10 standards that, you know, we try to adhere to all those standards, create a small learning community and uh, focus uh, on uh, implementing your career and technical education that that include and infuse the skills into the academics. Uh, that also goes the other way, that uh, academic skills are infused into your uh, career and technical education. And uh, w one of the great values, again, that I see uh, with micro-credentials, and especially within the academy system, is it gives you an opportunity to use those um, those areas of focus um, with the micro credentials as one of the uh, areas that you can use to connect your career and technical education with your academic classes. Because communication, one of the areas that we focused on, that's a that's an ELA area. I mean, it can be an ELA area. It also has value in your other subject areas. So it was a great connector for our uh, career and technical education programs and our, our academic programs to uh, also reinforce those skills. So it it's kind of builds that natural bridge for us. Let me let everybody know the three credentials, Steve, that you all did focus oh, on. Oh, please do. Yeah. It, was, it was critical thinking, mm -hmm. oral communication and initiative were the three primary digital micro-credentials. The school district used our visual imagery and put their branding in colors, and it shows as if those credentials are being awarded by Polk County School District. And the credentials that were awarded were provided to the, the student to then be able to have the opportunity to share it on a resume, in an application, put it on their LinkedIn profile, to use it as part of their career trajectory as they and, move forward. And, and those were selected from our 2019 uh, outreach that we did with our business community. So, Well, actually, multiple, multiple forms, right? We, we, did, we had those roundtables. Oh, this, yeah. The new superintendent actually did a community-wide survey called Portrait of the Graduate. And then we ran, so the lab has a tool called the T-Profile, and we ran T-Profile sessions to call out what the ideal 21st century skills were in any particular hard-to-fill entry-level position, as well as the technical skills, so that we could make sure we were aligned as what, to what was important for this bit to this business community. And all three of those data sources were merged together to then identify the credentials that we we kind of leveraged when we began. So Steve, now that Propel Polk is over, is there anything that we can expect next with Propel Polk and Education Design Lab or Polk County? Well, we are definitely uh, looking forward to um, expanding uh, micro credentials uh, here in Polk County. Um, I have uh, uh, plans, and I have I have some schools that um, have are full adopters of the of the ten national standards, and they are the ones that again are the most interested in uh, in utilizing uh, the micro credentials. So I have a place for them. Um, we are going to expand. I do have backing uh, from the superintendent. Uh, on those plans. And, um, you know, uh, as I said before, we need to meet the needs of our business partners. And uh, micro credentials uh, are one of those ways that we are showing that we are listening to our business partners and uh, that we are preparing students 
uh, to uh, work in the field that um, and, and demonstrate those skills that the micro credentials offer. So my plan is to uh, continue to uh, offer more micro credentials, uh, expand micro credentials. Hopefully, we will make them a mandatory part of um, our curriculum. Uh, we have people that have have found value in them now. The, you know, it's, the Propel Polk has given us a a taste of what we can potentially do with these and uh i'm i'm on board we are full steam ahead on micro credentials so ayana i want to i want to add it's kind of like going back a little bit to an insight which is it's the delivery the learning the assessment of the digital micro credentials of the 21st century skills is really not the difficult part the difficult part is the strategy is figuring out how you're going to implement, where you're going to implement, who's going to buy in. Is it integrated into the curriculum? Is it, is it mandatory, as Steve said? Is it optional? Is it, right? It's all of those questions. It is not doing these types of uh, experiences is not just business as usual. It's thinking differently and reorganizing in a way that is directly responding to your local community's needs. It's hard work sometimes. And so a lot of the insights you've heard Steve and I talking about were lessons learned along the way. That's why we were testing it and piloting it with 11th and 12th graders. And so finding the best route, is it a part of the, of the academy curriculum? Is it a part, you know, Polk County has a, a really robust technical career and technical education program. Is it a part of those technical colleges? Is it, um, how do we think about having the best success with these digital micro-credentials? And, oh, we forgot to mention, Steve, that we had $50,000 in scholarships that were oh. awarded oh, to yeah. those leaders, right, as part of this project, that those who completed the digital micro-credentials, for every credential that they were awarded, they were able to apply for a $1,000 scholarship. And so, you know, it's, it was, it's integrating and thinking about how you can make these tools a part of the fabric of the learning process and not just something different on the side. But it does require some maneuvering and some fin finesse around <laughs> strategy, right? You got to think of the strategy and what does it look like. And so, thinking about some of some of the question as far as like, what is a high school student? How do we get a high school student employed? Well, the mm -hmm. more an individual can speak to the skills, right? The lab talks about skills visibility. If they can make, if the skills are visible to the individual, what do I know? What can I do? And they can then communicate those via either a resume, an application, a LinkedIn profile, or an interview. Then we're really providing the opportunity for that individual to make those skills visible for themselves and to that talent marketplace, to the talent, to those who are looking for talent in your local community. We are also very, very fortunate that the Board of County Commissioners here in Polk County um, agreed to interview anyone that came out with one of those digital micro credentials. So they had scholarships. There was potential job with the county that they, the county said that they would interview anyone with those credentials. And it starts to build, um, I'll say, uh, opportunities that can be leveraged, whether someone's coming out of high school and going straight into the workforce or using this as a springboard into post secondary, other post secondary training and learning that they're continuing on for. Because once they continue on that trajectory and into the into a job or a career, they're just stacking up those credentials that we kind of talked about earlier. That was a lot of thought process to think about. I'm like, my brain is like hurting oh. just to think about all the things you had to go through for it to just be implemented in Polk County. Yeah, well, it was uh, well worth it. And um, uh, I, I want to uh, thank Naomi uh, for bringing this. Aww bringing this to us because um, it was uh, extremely valuable and uh, the Polk County school system is going to be benefit from it. But most importantly, the students of Polk County are, are going to benefit from it. So thank you. And thank you very much, Steve. And we would be remiss also to not recognize those who, who are along on this journey with us. So, so Matthew Aranda is one of our education designers at Education Design Lab. He was the lead on this project. And so he was down in the weeds working with the teachers of Polk County, working with your coordinators, Steve, on, mm -hmm. under, on, that work under you, um, came into Polk County to do training with those teachers. So 
you know, he was, he was, um, he was a great partner. Yeah. Was part of that. And Steve, I don't know, you may have some on your side that you want to, you want to mention that were part of the process as well. Well, uh, originally, uh, I've had uh, Leslie Green, uh, work on this project for me. Uh, she has really kept it, uh, in the road and kept her focus on it. Um, and has attended her and Matthew work together very well. So, um, I, I, I would, uh, uh, you know, again, without Matthew and Leslie, the, all of the technical things that needed to be done for the project would not have been done. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to education design labs podcast. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>